everyone, welcome to the Oaklerts YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be going over the September Perfectly Peace box, and this comes to us from Me Time Embroidery. So if you're new to the Perfectly Peace box, this is a monthly subscription where they're going to send you all the digital files that you need to create a quilt block using an embroidery machine. I know, I just, I could not wrap my mind around that when I first started this, and now I just, I love it so much. So every month you're gonna get all the files you need as well as project ideas. Now these can be different size quilt blocks. You can make a two inch quilt block, or you could make up to like an eight inch quilt block. It really just depends on what project you're feeling like doing as well as what type of machine you have. So I will tell you that I am using a Brother PE800, which I think is a great, beginner single needle embroidery machine. I got mine off of Amazon. I'll have a link for it down below, but I do have limits. I can only make the two inch or four inch block on this embroidery machine. But if I wanna make a bigger block, I'm going to have to make sure I have a machine that can have a hoop for a bigger block. So I am going to be focusing on the four inch block today. There are actually two different options for the Perfectly Peace subscription. You could just do the digital files. So if you have a bunch of scraps at home and you're like, I don't need any more material, I don't need any more thread, then just do the digital option. Um, I actually use that with my own scraps for a project I'm gonna show you in just a moment or you can opt for the box kit and you're gonna get some fun fabric, usually some thread, maybe some other notions, as well as a printout of all the instructions. So if you're somebody who really likes to have that nice glossy printout and you put it in your binder, it's already got the holes punched out, uh, you're gonna wanna join up for the actual physical box. So I have not gone through this box yet. However, I did download the digital files to just test it out on my own. And oh my gosh, you guys, this is so cute. This is the peekaboo pouch from Mormino. I do have a tutorial already going over this project. So if you wanna go check it out, you can do that. I'm not gonna be walking with you how to make the bag today, but I did wanna show you the quilt blocks. So you can see on this pouch here, I made two of the two inch quilt blocks and then one of the four inch quilt blocks. And these quilt blocks today are these adorable little houses. I love it so much. I decided to use them like spooky fabric to kind of give it like a haunted house, kind of like fall feel. And then on the other side, I just used two four inch blocks to create a really cool look. So that's how I like to do it. I actually like to build the block on the machine, quilt the block through the batting on the machine, which is what we'll be doing today. And then I put those blocks together and use them in a bag, in a pouch, something fun. Cause like this, this is so stinking cute, isn't it? Oh my gosh, you gotta make this. If you make these blocks, try to make this pouch as well. You're gonna love it. So thank you as always to Me Time Embroidery for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't signed up for Perfectly Peace and you're interested, I will have a link down below as well as other instructions. I highly recommend this box. I think it's very, very fun. It, it, for somebody like me who is a bag maker but was a quilt maker in the beginning, I always like to have a quilt project going on. And while right now I just don't have the motivation really to have like a big quilt I'm working on, this kind of fills that cup. You know what I mean? Like my, my quilter's cup, I need, I need to be filled up a little bit each month and this does that for me. And so I get to use these beautiful quilt blocks in bags, which are, you know, what I'm making anyways. So if you're new to the Oaklords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. I will have timestamps today. This is a quick video. These are very fast to make. I absolutely love them, but I will have timestamps. If you're just interested in the unboxing of this, you can just click down in the description of this video and the timestamps will be listed. They'll also just be running along the bottom of the screen right here. All right guys, let's get started. All right, so let's open up this month's box. As always, it's this beautiful orange box. And I was wondering, do you guys keep your orange boxes? Because these are really nice. And as somebody who owns a small business, um, boxes are a pretty big expense. So I feel like I just cannot get rid of these beautiful boxes. They're just so fancy. So let's open this up. Ooh, perfectly peace. So let's flip this over. Ooh, so it's gonna talk to you about stabilizer. Here is what the kit comes with. Here's the fabric choices, how you get the digital content. So cute. Oh my goodness, look at this little fabric bundle. Oh, it's so folly. Look at the green and the blue. Ooh, look at these solids. Oh my gosh. I this is like a color for shirts that I always go for, kind of like this rust color. That's beautiful. These are some beautiful options and I feel like there's a lot of fabric considering the quilt block only really requires three different colors. So you have a lot of options in this little bundle. I love that. 
Oh, look at the thread. So it seems like every month we're going to get a different color thread, which is fantastic. It allows you to slowly build your thread collection. You use such a small, small amount of thread on this project that you will have plenty of extra for all future projects. So this color is beautiful. This is going to look lovely on that. Oh, look at this little notion. Oh, it's a little measuring tape. This is perfect. I actually am always looking for one of these like cloth measuring tapes. It's not fun trying to measure your waist with a, you know, standard 24 inch long quilt ruler. So this is fantastic. I love that. All right. And so actually this is my favorite part is the printout. And this is going to have all the cut measurements and everything for the different block sizes. This is going to have ideas for different things you can do. I mean, look how cute these are. You can, I love this, this little wall hanging with this little tree here. That is so cool. So you have lots of options and all the instructions are right here. So if you don't want to have to be looking at your iPad or your computer the whole time, you don't have to, you can just look at this. I love it. All right, so that's the box. So now let's get everything prepped. So I think I'm going to use these three colors. So you're gonna need a color for the house and you could do, so the house has the front wall and then the roof. So if you wanna do a different color for the front wall and a different color for the roof, you could, maybe I'll do that actually. You know, I have this fun gray, so I think I'll do that. So I think the house is going to be this floral. The roof is going to be this gray and the door is going to be this pink. And I like that because I actually used to live in a house in England uh, that had a bright pink, pinkish reddish door. Uh, so that makes me happy. So I'm gonna do a pink door, gray roof, and then blue skies, cause why not? So I'm gonna be doing the four inch block today. So I'm gonna go quickly cut this up and then get all my pieces ready. Okay, so going through all of our pieces, I have my little door. I have the pieces of my side of my building, I have the roof, and I have the sky. This is gonna be so cute. So have fun with this. Have lots and lots of fun with this. Get, make it super scrappy. So I have my pattern pieces. Here's some other things we'll be using today. I have this like mesh wash away stabilizer. This is what I really like to use with the quilt blocks. I don't like to use any sort of like, don't use a cutaway, no paper tear away, something really lightweight with these quilt blocks, especially if you're going to be making a quilt out of them or sewing them together into a bag, just something something not so stiff. So I love this stuff, I get this off of Amazon, I'll have a link down below. I also have my cut of batting. I do like adding the batting to this because I do quilt it. Uh, the measurement for the batting is going to depend on the quilt block size, so just check your pattern for that. I'll be using the thread they supply today. In the bobbin, I have bottom line, I don't have it here with me, but in the bobbin is bottom line thread. Uh, that's what I like to use on my single needle embroidery machine. These curved scissors are a must, they're super handy. My little Cricut iron, which I think is extremely helpful for all these blocks because we do have to iron teeny tiny pieces and so you don't want a big clunky iron. You're not gonna be able to use a big clunky iron. And then the Kimberbell paper tape is super, super handy with all things embroidery, so I always have that on hand. The hoop I'll be using today is a five inch by seven inch hoop, or it's just a, a hoop that can accommodate up to five inches by seven inches. Uh, this is the hoop that comes with my embroidery machine. It is the standard size for it. So this is gonna work for the four inch or two inch block, um, but I can't use it for any bigger blocks. And then here is my embroidery machine. It's the Brother PE800. I think it's fantastic. You can have your little thread go up here. Uh, it's affordable, it's great for beginners, it's easy to use, there's no gimmicks, there's no things you gotta do, you don't have to like oil every little piece of it all the time. It's very, very simple. I have an unboxing for this machine if you're interested, I'll have a link down below. Okay, so once we turn the embroidery machine on, we wanna make sure we have a flash drive on the side of the machine that has the files we're looking for. I'm going to click on my little flash drive icon. I'm gonna go over to perfectly pieced and I'm making the four inch block, which is the bigger one for me, and I'm going to set it. And you can see the only little light up that we have here is for the biggest hoop, meaning I have to use that. Click edit and end and embroider. And now that is all ready to go. So what I wanna do now is just hoop my stabilizer, which is this wash away mesh. So I just put my hoop on top of it and then give it a quick cut. There we go, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I lay my bottom hoop right side up, put my stabilizer over that hoop and then put my inner hoop inside of it. I like to give my stabilizer a little tug to make sure it's nice and taut, and then just tighten it up with the little screw over here. Now let's put this in the machine. So I have my new thread color installed in my machine, and this first step is just going to stitch out placement for the batting. Once that's stitched out, I'm going to take my batting cut and just cover that square that was stitched out on the stabilizer. We just wanna make sure it completely covers it. 
put this back down and now we're going to stitch down our batting in place. Once the batting is tacked down, I'm going to take the hoop out of the machine and then at my cutting mat, I'm going to just lift up the edge of the batting and trim down the sides. So I want to cut the batting as close as I can to the thread, but I don't want to cut through my stabilizer and I don't want to cut the threads. So just as close as you can get it. Now let's put the hoop back in the machine. And this next step is going to stitch out guidelines for all of the different pattern pieces. So now we want to take our door cut and we want to place it over this door piece here, but make sure it's completely covering both sides and it's covering this bottom line right here. So the door cut is pretty big. We want it to take up a lot of space. There we go. And now we're going to stitch down the side of the door. And make sure your door is right side up. Now let's take the hoop out of the machine. And what you want to do is just pull up on the small bit here that's left over on the side of the stitching. That's just excess fabric that we don't need. The bigger part over here needs to stay. Do not cut that. Just this little sliver on the side. Take that off. And now take your small cut for the house. So it's piece two. And you're going to lay it right side down. And you're going to line it up with the left edge stitching. So these are right sides together now. Our door is right side up, our house piece is right side down, and it's lined up with that stitch line. And let's put this back in the machine. And now let's stitch down piece two. Once that's stitched down, take it out of the machine. And now you're going to take pattern piece two and flip it over, and first give it a good finger press along that seam, and then take your small iron and just very carefully Press that seam. You don't have to hold it down for more than, you know, a bit of a second, just very quickly. You don't want to accidentally melt your stabilizer here. So now we're going to put this back in the machine. And now we're going to stitch down the placement line for piece three. So let's take this out of the machine once again. And now what you can do is just trim off this little sliver of excess fabric because we don't need that. That's just on the outside of that line. So now we have our door all stitched down. And now we're going to take pattern piece three we're going to lay it right side down, covering the door in pattern piece two. So the right edge of pattern piece three is going to line up with that stitch line that we just made. So it should be overhanging your hoop if you're doing the same size as me. There we go. Now let's put this back in the machine and let's stitch down pattern piece three. Okay, let's take it out of the machine. And then once again, we're going to just flip this right side up. Look how pretty that fabric is. Take our small iron very quickly and gently, just pressing on that seam, nowhere else. There we go. Now let's put it back in the machine. Now we're gonna stitch down the placement line for pattern piece four, which is the roof. So once again, take it out of the machine and we wanna trim down any of this excess fabric that's above the stitch line. So just pull it up and trim it down. So I'm trimming down all three of these pieces. There we go, it's okay if it's a little messy. So now let's grab our roof piece and we're going to take a roof piece and this is pattern piece four and we're going to lay it right side down and we're going to cover the bottom bit of the house and line up the raw edge with the stitch line we just made making sure it extends all the way from left to right there we go now let's put this back in the machine and let's stitch down pattern piece four and you guessed it remove it from the machine and let's flip pattern piece four up I always like to press the seam with my fingers first to flatten it out and then I'll grab my little iron to get a really nice flat seam here. Again, not too long. All right, let's put this back in the machine. And now we're going to stitch down the placement line for pattern piece five. Take the hoop out of the machine and pull up on this little triangle bit from pattern piece four because we're going to trim that down. So I just pull it up and kind of hold it up while I trim very close to the stitching with my scissors. And now take your pattern piece five and lay that right side down, lining up one of the long edges with that stitch line. And now let's put it back in the machine and let's stitch down pattern piece five. And just like before, we're gonna flip this right side up, finger press it, and then carefully and quickly press with our iron. Now let's put this back in the machine and we're going to stitch down the placement line for our last pattern piece, pattern piece six. So finally, take it out of the machine, and once again, you're going to cut down any material that's above the stitch line. And now take your final pattern piece and lay it right side down, long edge, 
against that stitch line and put this back in the machine. And now let's stitch down the final pattern piece. And for the final time, you're going to flip up this last pattern piece, finger press it a bit, and then press that seam with your iron to get it nice and flat. All right, building the block is now done. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to tack down all four edges so we know exactly what the square needs to be. And then we're going to embroider a little doorknob and do the embroidery design on this entire unit. So first up is the outline of the block. And now we'll do the little doorknob. And finally is the quilting design. All right, once it's all done embroidering, all you have to do is take it out of the hoop. This is so cute. So, so cute. If you have any little jump stitches, go ahead and trim those down. And then what I do is I grab a ruler and a rotary cutter and this outline stitch should be the size that you need. So for the four inch blocks, this should actually measure out four and a half by four and a half inches, but I'm going to use a rotary cutter and a ruler to just cut it perfectly. Look how stinking adorable that is. It's a little house with a little pink door and it's got little clouds in the sky. I love this. And whether you're making a wall hanging or a bag or a pillowcase or an actual quilt, I mean, this little block, if you made like a hundred of them and made it into a big old quilt, that would be the most special little block. Oh, you know what would be cute? If you had scraps of like baby clothes or if you had like some shirts from, you know, somebody in your life. Ah, uh, quilting is one of those things that it's not just making something. I mean, it's very rare that we just throw a bunch of fabric together and make a quilt and that's it. You know what I mean? When we make a quilt, it's very meaningful. We pick our fabrics, we pick our blocks, we pick the project and we're very thoughtful about every little piece of it and it takes so much time that like a lot of heart and soul goes into a quilt. And, and that's why I personally love it. Bags are so much fun, they're quick, they're creative, they're very artistic and we love that. Uh, but a quilt is like a physical representation of like a hug. You know what I mean? There's a lot of love in it. When you make a quilt for somebody, they know, they can feel the love you put into it, which is just, it's, it's just magical to me. So this would be a fun block to use for a big quilt uh, and you can make it very, very meaningful, especially with the little house because you know, Home is where the heart is, right? Or you can make a few of them. I made three of the four inch by four inch blocks and two of the two inch by two inch blocks and you can make yourself a super fun little spooky pouch like I did. Uh, if you wanna make this and you wanna use some of these fun little tags, I'll have a link from down below. These are really, really fun for this time of year. This one says, hauntingly handcrafted. Ooh, so cute. <laughs> So thank you so much for embroidering with me today. I hope you love making this. If you make these blocks this month and you use them in some sort of a project, let me know what you're making. I wanna, I wanna know. I need more ideas. Every, every month it's fun to be like, what should we use the block for this month? So uh, we're gonna be using them on a lot of bags because if, if you've seen my channel, we do a lot of bags on this channel. But I would love to hear other creative ways you guys are using your little embroidered quilt blocks. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Have a great rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.